Hello, my name is Paul Geyer and I'm here to chat with you about engineering properties of soil and rock. This is what I'll be talking about, it's kind of the chapters in the book if you will. Compaction characteristics of soil, density of cohesionless soils, permeability, consolidation, swelling, shrinkage, etc. Shear strength, elastic properties, modulus of subgrade reaction, and co coefficient of at rest, at rest earth pressure. By way of introduction, this is just a little bit about me and what I've been doing for the last few decades. This discussion considers engineering properties of soil and rock useful in designing foundations under static loading. Dynamic loads are not part of this discussion. Tables and charts based on easily determined index properties are useful for rough estimating or confirming design parameters. Testing procedures employed by different soil laboratories have influenced correlations presented to an unknown degree, and the scatter of data is usually substantial. Caution should therefore be exercised in using correlation values. Undisturbed soil testing, either laboratory or field or both, should be used for final design of major foundations. On smaller projects, an economic analysis should determine if a complete soil exploration laboratory testing program is justified in lieu of a conservative design based on correlation data. Complex subsurface conditions may not permit a decision on solely economic grounds. Properties of interest to the foundation ear <coughs> engineer include compaction, permeability, consolidation, swell, shear strength, stress, stress strain modulus, the modulus of elastic, elasticity, and Poisson's ratio. The density at which a soil can be placed as fill or backfill depends on the placement water content and the compaction effort. The modified compaction test, which is a federally defined compaction test that you can refer to and is identified here as CE55, or comparable commercial standards will be used as a basis for control. The CE55 test is described in Unified Facilities Criteria 3260-02, which is available online for free from the Whole Building Design Guide, wbdg.org. Other compaction efforts that may be occasionally used for special projects include the standard compaction test, three layers at 25 blows per layer, hammer at 5.5 pounds with a 12 inch drop. The 15 blow compaction test, three layers at 15 blows per layer, hammer weight 5.5 pounds with a 12 inch drop. The result of the CE55 test are represented by compaction curves as shown in figure one in which the water content is plotted versus compacted dry density. The ordinate of the peak of the curve is the maximum dry density and the abscissa is the optimum water content. Table 1 presents typical engineering properties of compacted soils. See the footnotes for compacted effort that applies. The density of cohesionless soils, <clears throat> relative density of cohesionless soils has a considerable influence on the angle of internal friction, allowable bearing capacity, and settlement of footings. An example of the relationship between relative density and in situ dry densities may be conveniently determined from figure 2. Methods for determining in situ densities or relative densities of sands in the field are not part of this discussion. The approximate relationship among the angle of friction and unit weight is shown in figure 3 and between the coefficient of uniformity and void ratio in figure 4. The relative compaction of a soil is defined by the formula identified as equation one on this slide, where the uh, 
dry density in the field and maximum dry density are designated as indicated and are obtained in the laboratory. For soils where 100% relative density is approximately the same as 100% relative density based on the CE55 methodology, the relative compaction and the relative density are related by the following empirical equation identified as equation 2 on this slide number 9. With regard to permeability, Darcy's law is the key uh, indicator. The laminar flow of water through soils is governed by Darcy's law, which is indicated on this slide 10 by equation 3. Q is equal to KIA, where Q is the seepage quantity in any time unit consistent with K. K is the coefficient of permeability, which is the units of velocity. I is equal to H divided by L, or the hydraulic gradient or head loss H across the flow path of length L and A is the cross-sectional area of flow. The permeability depends primarily on the size and shape of the soil grains, void ratio, shape and arrangement of voids, degree of saturation, and temperature. Permeability is determined in the laboratory by measuring the rate of flow of water through a specimen under known hydraulic gradient I. Typical permeability values, empirical relationships, and methods for obtaining the coefficient of permeability are shown in Figure 5. Field pumping tests are the most reliable means of determining the permeability of natural soil deposits. Permeability obtained in this manner is the permeability in a horizontal direction. The vertical permeability of natural soil deposits is affected by stratification and is usually much lower than the horizontal permeability. Figure 1 indicates typical CE55 compaction test data. Slide 13 is a indication on Table 1 of the typical engineering properties of compacted materials. Figure 2 indicates the relation between relative density and dry density scaled to plot as a straight line. Notes to the preceding Table 1 are indicated at the top of this slide, number 14. Figure 3 indicates the angle of friction versus dry density for coarse grain soils. Intact rock is generally impermeable, but completely intact rock masses rarely occur. The permeability of rock masses is controlled by discontinuities, fissures, joints, cracks, etc and flow may be either laminar, where Darcy's law applies, or turbulent, depending on the hydraulic gradient, size of flow path, channel roughness, and other factors. Consolidation is a time-dependent phenomenon which relates change that occurs in the soil mass to the applied load. Consolidation or one-dimensional compression tests are made in accordance with accepted standards. Results of tests uh, indicated in Figure 6 as representative are presented in terms of time, consolidation curves, and pressure void ratio curves. The relationship between void ratio and effective vertical stress, P, is shown on a semi-logarithmic diagram in Figure 6. The test results may also be plotted as change in volume versus effective vertical stress. Typical examples of pressure void ratio curves for insensitive and sensitive normally loaded clays and pre-consolidated clays are shown in Figure 7. <clears throat> the 
the pre-consolidation stress, PC, is the maximum effective stress to which the soil has been exposed and may result from loading or drying. Geological evidence of past loading should be used to estimate the order of magnitude of pre-consolidation stresses before laboratory tests are performed. The Casa Grande method of obtaining the pre-consolidation pressure from consolidation tests is shown in Figure 7. Determining the point of greatest curvature requires care and judgments. Sometimes it is better to estimate two positions of this point one uh, of this point, one as small as likely and the other as large as plausible, consistent with the data and to repeat the construction for both cases. The result will be a range of pre-consolidation stress. Slide 19 is uh, an indication of figure 4, generalized curves for estimating E values from gradational and particle shape characteristics. Slide 20 is an indication on figure 5 of a summary of soil permeabilities and methods of determination. Slide 21 is a continuation of figure 5 indicating the summary of soil permeabilities and methods of their determination. Slide 22 indicates figure 6, which is an example of laboratory consolidation test data. Slide 23 is a continuation of figure 6, an example of laboratory consolidation test data. Slide 24 is a further uh, extension of uh, the figure 6, which is an example of laboratory consolidation test data. Slide 25 presents figure 7 and analyses of consolidation test data. Slide 26 is a continuation of Figure 7 analyses of consolidation test data. Because the determination of PC involves some inevitable inaccuracy, the range of possible values may be more useful than a single estimate which falls somewhere in the possible range. The higher the quality of the test specimen, the smaller is the range of possible PC values. Approximate values of pre-consolidation pressure may be estimated from Figure 8 or other literature. Table 2 can be used to obtain gross estimates of site pre-consolidation. This table and Figure 8 and other literature should be applied before consolidation tests are performed to assure test loads sufficiently high to define the virgin compression portion of E log P plots. The slope of the virgin compression curve is the compression index C sub C defined in figure 6. Compression index correlations for approximations are given in table 3. When volume change is expressed as vertical strain instead of change in void ratio, the slope of the virgin compression part of the lambda versus log p curve is the compression ratio CR defined uh, by equation 4 indicated on this slide, 
where delta E is the change in vertical strain corresponding to a change in effective pressure from P1 to P2 and E sub 0 is the initial or in situ void ratio. An approximate correlation between CR and natural water content in clays is given by equation 5 on this slide 28. The relationship between deformation or strain and stress for one-dimensional compression is expressed by the coefficient of volume compressibility m sub v which is defined as indicated in equation 6 on this slide 29. Slide 30 presents figure 8 which is an indication of the approximate relation between liquidity index and effective overburden pressure as a function of the sensitivity of the soil. The components of the uh, indicated on the previous uh, figure are defined on this slide 31. The units of M sub V are the reciprocal of constrained modulus. Table 4 gives typical values of M sub V for several granular soils during virgin loading. If overburden pressure is decreased, soil undergoes volumetric expansion, swell, as shown in figure 7. The semi-logarithmic straight line this may have to be approximated slope of the swelling curve is expressed by the swelling index C sub s as indicated by equation 8 on this slide 32. The value of C sub r is defined by equation 9 and is equal to or slightly smaller than C sub s. High values of the ratio CR divided by C sub s are associated with overconsolidated clays containing swelling clay minerals. Slide 34 presents table 2 which is an estimation of the degree of pre-consolidation with different methods employed. The soil properties that control the drainage rate of pore water are combined into the coefficient of consolidation C sub V as defined by equation 10 or alternatively by equation 11. The components of the equations just presented are defined on this slide 36. Correlation between C sub V and LL are shown <clears throat> in figure 10 for undisturbed and remolded soil. Table 3, indicated on slide 37, indicates compression index correlations for clays, sand, and silt. Figure 9 uh, on slide 38 indicates the approximate correlations for swelling index of silts and clays. Figure 10 indicates correlations between the coefficient of consolidation and liquid limit. The 
coefficient of secondary compression is as indicated <clears throat> and occurs during one log cycle of time following completion of primary consolidation, refer to figure 7. The coefficient of secondary compression is computed as indicated in the formula on this slide 40. where T sub P is time to complete primary consolidation and H sub F is uh, total thickness of compressible soil at time TP. Soils with high compressibilities as determined by the compression index of virgin compression ratio will generally also have high values of C sub mu. Highly sensitive clays and soils with high organic contents usually exhibit high rates of secondary compression. Overconsolidation can markedly decrease secondary compression. Depending on the degree of overconsolidation, the value of C mu is typically about one half to one third as large for pressures below the preconsolidation pressure as it is for the pressures above the preconsolidation pressures. For many soils, the value of C mu approximately equals 0 0.00015 W with W in percent. Remolding or disturbance has the following effects relative to undisturbed soil. E log P curve disturbance lowers the void ratio reached under applied stresses in the vicinity of the preconsolidation stress and reduces the uh, distinct break in the curve at the preconsolidation pressure, refer to figure 7. At stresses well above the preconsolidation stress, the E log P curve approaches closely that for good undisturbed samples. Disturbance lowers the apparent preconsolidation stresses. Disturbance lowers the value of the compression index, but the effect may not be severe. Disturbance increases the swelling and recompression indices. Disturbance decreases the coefficient of consolidation for both virgin compression and recompression, refer to figure 10, in the vicinity of initial overburden and preconsolidation stresses. For good undisturbed samples, the value of C sub V decreases abruptly at the preconsolidation pressure. Disturbance decreases the coefficient of secondary compression in the range of virgin compression. The swelling potential is an index property and equals the percent swell of a laterally confined soil sample that has soaked under a surcharge of one pound per square inch after being compacted to the maximum density at optimum water content according to the standard compaction test method. For a discussion of correlation between swelling potential and PI for natural soils compacted at optimum water content to standard maximum density refer to the technical paper indicated on this slide 44. The amount of swelling and shrinkage depends on the initial water content. If the soil is wetter than the sh shrinkage limit SL, the maximum possible shrinkage will be related to the difference between the actual water content and the shrinkage limit SL. Similarly, little swell will occur after the water content has reached some value above the plastic limit. Collapsible soils are unsaturated soils that undergo large decreases in volume upon wetting with or without additional loading. An estimate of collapsibility, that is decrease in volume from change in moisture available and expansion of a soil may be based on in situ dry density and LL as described in the technical paper referenced on slide 45. The shear strength of soils is largely a function of the effective normal stress on the shear plane which equals the total norm normal force less the pore water pressure. 
The shear strength S can be expressed in terms of the total normal pressure S or the effective normal pressure S prime by parameters determined from laboratory tests or occasionally estimated from correlations with index properties. The shear test apparatus is shown in figure 11 and the equations for shear strength are as indicated on this slide 46. The total undrained shear strength parameters C and F are designated as cohesion and angle of internal friction respectively. Undrained shear strengths apply where there is no change in the volume of pore water i.e. no consolidation, and are measured in the laboratory by shearing without permitting drainage. For saturated soils, F sub zero, F equal to zero, and the undrained shear strength, C, is designated as S sub U. The effective shear parameters indicated are used for determining the shear strength provided pore pressures U are known. Pore pressure changes are caused by a change in either normal or shear stress and can be either positive or negative. Pore pressures are determined from piezometer observations during and after construction or, for design purposes, estimated on the basis of experience and behavior of samples subjected to shear tests. Effective stress parameters are computed from laboratory tests in which pore pressure induced during shear are measured or by applying the shearing load sufficiently slow as to result in fully drained conditions within the test specimen. Figure 11 indicates shear test apparatus and shearing resistance of soils data. Approximate undrained shear strengths of fine-grained cohesive soils can be rapidly determined on undisturbed samples and occasionally on reasonably intact samples from drive sampling using simple devices such as the pocket penetrometer, laboratory vein shear device, or the miniature vein shear device. To establish the reliability of these tests, it is desirable to correlate them with unconfined compression tests. Unconfined compression tests are widely used because they are somewhat simpler than Q triaxial compression tests, but test results may scatter broadly. A more desirable test is a single Q triaxial compression test with the chamber pressure equal to the total in situ pressure. Unconfined compression tests are appropriate primarily for testing saturated clays that are not jointed or slicken-sided. The Q triaxial compression test is commonly performed on foundation clays since the in situ undrained shear strength generally controls the allowable bearing capacity. Sufficient unconfined compression and or Q tests should be performed to establish a detailed profile of undrained shear strength with depth. Undrained strengths may also be estimated from the standard penetration test cone penetrometer soundings and field vein tests. For important structures, the effects of loading or unloading on the undrained shear strength should be, be determined by R, consolidated undrained triaxial compression tests on representative samples of each stratum. The undrained shear strength of saturated clays can be expressed as indicated by equations 13 and 14 on slide 50. The undrained cohesion intercept of the Mohr-Coulomb failure envelope is C sub U. The undrained shear strength, C sub U, of normally consolidated cohesive soils is proportional to the effective overburden pressure, P sub O. An approximate correlation is as indicated in equation 14 on slide 51. A correlation between the remolded undrained shear strength of clays and the liquidity index, 
is indicated in the technical paper referenced on slide 51. A correlation between the normalized S sub U P sub O ratio of overconsolidated soils and the overconsolidation ratio OCR is discussed in the technical publication indicated on slide 51. The value of P sub O in the equation indicated is the effective present overburden pressure. Values of the ratio SUPO may be estimated from this reference under the conditions indicated on slide 51. The sensitivity of a clay soil is defined as indicated on this slide. Uh, and it is discussed in the technical publication uh, cited on this slide 52. The pre-consolidation pressure rather than the effective overburden pressure should be used for overconsolidated soils when entering this figure. Cementation and aging cause higher values of the effective strength of parameters cohesive soils as indicated in figure 9 the peak and residual strengths may be shown as failure and post failure envelopes values of the peak drained friction angle for normally consolidated clays may be estimated from figure 12 after reaching the peak shear strength over consolidated clays strain soften to a residual value of strength corresponding to the resistance to sliding on an established shear plane. Large displacements are necessary to achieve this minimum ultimate strength requiring an annular shear apparatus or multiple reversals in the direct shear box. Typical values of residual angles of friction are shown in figure 13. In sandy soils, the cohesion is negligible. Because of the relatively high permeability of sands, the angle <clears throat> of internal friction is usually based solely on drained tests. The angle of internal friction of sand is primarily affected by the density of the sand and normally varies within the limits of about 28 to 46 degrees, refer to figure 3. Table 4 indicates the sensitivity of clays. Approximate values of F are as indicated in equations 15 and 16 <coughs> on slide 55. The values of F equals 25 degrees for loose sands and F, F equals 35 degrees for dense sands are conservative for most cases of static loading. If higher values are used, they should be justified by results from consolidated drained triaxial tests. Silt tends to be dilative or contractive depending upon the consolidation stresses applied. Thus, the back pressure saturated consolidated undrained triaxial test with poor pressure measurements is used. If the silt is dilative, the strength is determined from the consolidated drained shear test. The strength determined from the consolidated undrained test is used if the silt is contractive. Typical values of the angle of internal friction from consolidated drained tests commonly range from 27 to 30 degrees for silt and silty sands and from 30 to 35 degrees for loose and dense conditions. The consolidated undrained tests yield 15 to 25 degrees. The shear strength used for design should be that obtained from the consolidated drained tests. Slide 57 presents figure 12, which is Im an empirical correlation between friction angle and plasticity index from triaxial compression tests on normally consolidated undisturbed clays. 
The elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio are often used in connection with the elasticity theory for estimating subsoil deformations. Both of these elastic properties vary nonlinearly with confining pressure and shear stress. Typical values given below refer to moderate confining pressures and more. In practical problems, stresses before loading are generally anisotropic. It is generally considered that the modulus of elasticity is proportional to the square root of the average initial principal stress, which may usually be taken as indicated by equation 17 on slide 58, where K sub O is the coefficient of at rest earth pressure and S sub V prime is the effective vertical stress. The proportionality holds for 0 0.5 less than K sub O less than uh, 2 when working stresses are less than one half the peak strength. The undrained modulus for normally consolidated clays may be related to the undrained shear strength by the expression indicated on slide 59. The undrained modulus may also be estimated from figure 14. Field moduli <clears throat> may double these values. Poisson's ratio varies with strain and may be as low <clears throat> as 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 at small strains or more than 0 0.5. The modulus of subgrade reaction is the ratio of load intensity to subgrade deformation as indicated by equation 19 on slide 60 where the quantities are as defined on slide 60. Values of K sub S may be obtained from general order of decreasing accuracy by plate or pile load test, empirical equations, or tabulated values uh, as indicated by Table 6. The state of effective lateral stress in situ under at-rest conditions can be expressed through the coefficient of earth pressure at rest and the existing vertical overburden pressure. This ratio is termed K sub O and given by equation 20 on slide 61. The coefficient of at-rest earth pressure applies for condition of no lateral strain. Estimate values of K sub O are indicated by equations 21 and 22 on slide 61. Estimates of K sub O for both normally consolidated and over consolidated soils in terms of PI may be made using methods described by the referenced publication on slide 61. For over consolidated soils, this method applies mainly for unloading conditions and reloading may cause a large drop in K sub O values. For soils that display high overconsolidation ratios as a result of desiccation, K sub O will be overestimated by the relationship shown. Figure 13 indicates the relationship between residual friction angle and plasticity index. Table 5 on slide 63 indicates values of modulus of subgrade reaction for footings as a guide to order of magnitude. Figure 14 on slide 64 is a chart for estimating undrained modulus of clay. And this brings us to the conclusion of this brief discussion of engineering properties of soil and rock. I hope that this has been of some interest to you and will provide you with some information that will be helpful uh, for you moving forward as projects in this area come across your desk in the future. With that, 
Thank you once again for letting me chat with you and have a nice rest of the day.